All right, hey, I am here, Vinny Fisher with The Vinny Fisher Show. I have an amazing guest on here today who, look at him, he just smiles, he can't help himself, he's debonair, he's all these things, but most importantly, everybody, what you need to know is he's a dear friend. He's a friend that will call it like he sees it, whether I want to hear that or not. And those are the type of men I need to be surrounded by. So... I am excited to announce Tony Grabemeyer, who is the CEO and founding partner of a company called Ship Offers, located out there in good old Denver, Colorado. Tony, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Brother, I you have been in my ear about having guests on this show. And, you know, I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. So when I thought about who are some of my initial guests on the show, if I didn't have you and Ed O'Keefe right up near the top, I was going to be in trouble. You right? just get you get the worst out of the way, right? That's what you don't tell them, but you're like, let me practice on my friends because if I screw up, they'll still love me and appreciate me. Well, it gives me a chance to have a repeat show with you too, right? There you go. Yeah. When you've refined your art, you know that I'll be ready to do it again. Well, I just love the fact that, you know, we're, I'm actually practicing something that you preach, get rid of and destroy the excuses. So this, I, here's what's interesting, Tony. I would look back at our, you know, I own a company that does analytics, right? We, we look at math and we make decisions and our team told us that we have a lot of, uh, good interaction from from this type of collaboration. So when I'm other on other people's shows like yours, the Tony G Show, is that what you call it? The Tony G Show, which is awesome, by the way. Um, we got great interaction, and so that's why I'm doing this. One for that, two because. I get the privilege to be on the show with amazing men like you who have such a good message for the world. So I want to go there. Before I get into a big part about talking about destroying excuses, can I have a little bit of a commercial about my friend Tony G? So uh, there's like six of us that know this. And for the rest of the world, I want them to know who you are. Sure. Uh, you want the business or the professional side with the business mixed in or just personal? You tell me and I'll give it to you. Well, I think I need a little bit of both because our lives are not defined just by our business. So why don't cool. you sprinkle yeah. both? I was born into a small little community called Santa Cruz, California, and I met two of my long life childhood friends. And, and some years down the road after high school and college, we, we teamed back up and have been in business together 16 years. Wow. So first and foremost, By the way, I that's an up, amazing blessing to be in business oh, that long with somebody. So good job. Yeah. So I first and foremost, what? <laughs> I tell everybody, you, you hear it, like don't go into business with your friends. And I'm going to tell you, to a certain extent, you're probably right. Yeah. But I don't listen to what other people are telling me because I always want to know for myself because I don't want to get down the road and then have regret. I always kind of want to say, hey, let's go see and figure out if there's opportunity and what that would look like and then set some boundaries. Well, we all came in with a couple bucks in our pocket and didn't know what to do. And we, we started ship offers uh, in California in 2001. Uh, Gil actually ponied up the $5,000 to get our, our business off the ground. They found a business uh, location. Uh, we spent some money on some Ikea furniture. We got some $99 desks. I mean, I think we just threw out, after 15 years, the conference table. Now, we didn't even have a business business. We just wanted to look like we were in business. And uh, we set ourselves up for success. And then quickly thereafter, our first year in business, I want to say we made about $86,000. Wow. And uh, I was there, you know, it was it was September 11th, 2001. I mean, I was in the warehouse with Gil and Doug and we watched all this stuff on the news and, you know, we'd only been in business for, you know, five, six months and we're already like, is it over? You know, like, I, I we, you know, you're just, you get hit with something like you see on television and all your fears and everything come and I'm sitting in there folding boxes and we're still trying to sell stuff our own, on our own. And that's really where our model transitioned. We realized that we saw a hole in the marketplace and we didn't want to be a seller anymore. We wanted to go out and handle the logistics for marketers and provide solutions to marketers. Kind of like what you see in the accountable in, in, in I think the accounting world where you see people and there's like this disconnect and you want to bring connection. Mm. And, and that was huge for us. 
Um, so we sat back and we realized, oh my gosh, we don't know anything about selling online. Like even though in nineties I, I was selling and, and making traffic deals across the board, that was one thing, not selling something that was completely different. I'd never sold a supplement online. And then quickly, um, Right into 2002, we quickly changed our business model and offered wholesale products and services and realized we found our sweet spot with fulfillment. And, you know, the last like probably four years now, all the way in 2017, our business has had 600 percent growth last year, 300 and like 30 percent growth the year before. And then the previous three years, like 128. So in case and I missed it, what does Ship Offers do? Cool. Ship Offers is a product sourcing and logistics operation for marketers. So we take the headache out of buying products and sourcing and wondering if they're gonna sell or not. And we allow you to tap into our back end and have 60 products that you can pretty much you know, play around with and see if you can sell on your offer. And if they do, then we'll help you scale that offer and keep all your cash flow in your pocket so you can spend it more on you know, advertising stuff. And then you can pay us after the fact. So let so, me ask you a question, just because yep. like my simple mind doesn't know as much as you know. So does that basically sound like on-demand inventory? Yeah, 100% pays you go on demand. There's You can use any terminology you like. All I'll tell you is you keep your cash flow in your pocket instead of going to a lab and having a dream of like, oh, I want to make a product. And they're like, cool, buy 5,000 of these. And you're like, sounds good. They send you the bill and you're like, great, give me give me 50%. That may be 5, 10, 50,000, whatever that product is. And then they take six to eight weeks to make it. And then as it gets ready to ship, they're like, hey, so we need that other 50% before we can leave our warehouse. And you're saying to yourself, well, I haven't even sold anything. I don't have any more money. And that's where we come in to solve that equation, that problem. We actually have products ready to go for you to test today. So all that money that you would have spent wondering if you can sell it or not, keep it in your pocket, take some of our products, put them on your website, sell them, know that we have a source for them. You're not going to run out. And then when you do get to the part where you do want to make your own product, then we'll come back and talk about leveraging our buying power to help you and your cash flow again. Gotcha. So when that all happens, what's the biggest friction point you notice for a prospect or a client when you see like, that sounds great, on-demand inventory, I saved 10 grand. I want my own product, man. So here's the deal. I was sitting around, you know, the barbecue and we were making steaks and someone said, you know, you need to create the weight loss product from all. And I'm like... So you, you want to go create your own weight loss product. All right. Have you ever spent any time with a neurologist or a doctor talking about, no, no, no. I saw this, this thing on Oz and I saw this thing on Yahoo and I'm going to put this things together and that's great. Can you sell it? You know, everybody says yes, but no one really truly brings you a workable, winnable model where they're actually selling the product. I'm like, sell first, get friction. Get a taste of returns, get a taste of merchant account problems, get a taste of kind of like the scalable stuff. And then let's talk about building that formula that you sat around that one night at the barbecue talking about, because now you have something that you have That's is awesome. leverage. Yep. You have leverage towards me. I don't have leverage right now in the beginning. So I need some leverage. And how do I do that? I'm going to go produce results. Once I produce results, I'm like, I can sell $100,000 of supplements a month. I want to make my own formula. Can we whittle down the price? Cool. So I, I would imagine two types of people come to you, the marketer who wants the product and the product developer who maybe not so much of a marketer. Yeah. So back in the day, it was all like eBayers and uh, people on Amazon in the beginning days. And, and we were like the onesies and twosies shop. Like, oh, I got onesies and twosies. I need to sell this. And I'm like, no. And then they would take our entire catalog and put it on their, their website. And they're like, cool, I just launched my superstore. And I'm like, oh no, you didn't. And they're like, oh yeah, it's great. So now I can sell one bottle to grandma, one bottle to Vivian, and then maybe a bottle of supplements to Bob, the guy who wants to get in shape. I'm like, hey, don't oh, forget mom. Mom will always buy a bottle or two. Three bottles you sold. That's awesome. <laughs> and I, I say, that's where you should test. That's the, that's the model that I think everybody gets wrong. If you really want to learn how the business works, Go buy 10 separate order items off of Amazon. Just go to Amazon, find 10 different products that you'd like, preferably ones that are not trademarked, so you have the license to resell, then go and sell them over on eBay. So you can get into seeing if they actually work, if there's a buyer market, see how the, the products came from Amazon, how they were, some people fulfilled them themselves, some Amazon did. 
Now you can go answer the questions on eBay and start to understanding, oh my gosh, I'm gonna launch a supplement business. I'm gonna have returns, refunds. I'm gonna have disputes and paybacks and all this kind of crap that goes with your business. Now, you, now you're learning, is this something that you wanna scale? All right, so hold on a second. Before we get to scale, because I want I, I think there's another part of the world. There's that world of people who, you know, they're, they're a health professional, they're a coach, they're a fitness guru, they're somebody, they're not just like looking for a marketing angle or they think they can sell something. They have a real dialed in passion to help people, right? They might just lack the ability to market, right? But they yeah, really- Yeah, so they're, they're your chiropractors, you're the medical professionals, yep. they're your trainers, and they're really good at seeing patients but they don't have a system in place to actually help their patients where they don't feel like they're pushing uh, products and supplements to them. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who are chiropractors and I literally walk them through a business model of how to actually not be the one to ask for the product, but be the one that recommends it. See Vivian on your way out, she's got this month's supplements for you. And all you need to do is get on this product and we'll measure your blood, your results, and we'll check back with you in 60 days to see how you're doing. And the next appointment, be sure to remind Vivian um, to pick up your supplements on the way out and she'll have them ready after you see the chiropractor, right? So you have to build a model that sets you up for success as a professional. Trainers do a great job of spending all their time talking to people around coming in three days a week and pushing weights while his pot belly's leaning over the, the bench and he's like, just do more of this. But he's not taking his own advice. But if he actually had a plan set up in place for you, like if it was fasting and these are the supplements that you needed and he actually did it, he would be surprising himself that he could probably push an extra five to ten thousand dollars a month. If on average you saw 50, 50 people a month at your facility, you could push an extra five to ten thousand in throughput just in sales of supplements. Yep. Get it right. In, right in your business. It's, it's most people lose the opportunity like I gotta go launch a business no you don't you already have a business let's find ways to be effective in selling more to the people that you already see but sell products that you're passionate about that you truly know make a difference in somebody's lives I am a big proponent about finding things that you're passionate about not things that you just want to fill up your wallet about there's so, a very big difference oh buddy I tell you and so it looks like I touched a nerve there so that's great so your two things you talked about, I want to dial in a little deeper about. I want to talk about how you make partnerships work. And I want to start, though, with that nasty little word that got you all excited, scale. So talk to me about, um, and I don't even have to ask you to be fully transparent. That's just how you roll. So talk to me a little bit about the thing that's scaling the most in your business, prefaced with, What's the thing you're having the largest struggle with while you're scaling? Okay, um, people. Okay, so people. Oh, people. People are scaling or you need people to scale? I think both, right? Influx of so many people coming to us at one time. I Like literally we were talking today, like maybe it's time we just put up the wall and say stop. We can't take any more people right now. So oh, the, the salesman and you and I can't do that, right? Like, no, I don't even no, no, no. know that I'm capable so then, to say that. And then thanks to you coming to my office last week, I have a <laughs> bunch of notes up on my whiteboard because you not only got me thinking, now you really got the team thinking, cool. right? You're like, hmm. So it's people and systems. If you want to scale, you need people and systems. You need the right people in the right seats doing the right jobs. And I just got back from a mutual friend of ours, uh, Joe Polish's Genius Network. And, it was awesome. Uh, Love that guy. No, it was totally awesome. And, yeah. and I'm not going to do him service, but the, the guy who's in the group from Infusionsoft was talking about people and systems that the same people who are with you from like, you know, 300,000 to a million in that one cycle may not be with you mm. from a million to three million. Like, and you have to be okay that people do have a cycle. Some people may be with you two cycles. Most likely, the higher up, people are not going to be with you all cycles. So, you know, all levels from, because we were talking about it, like I said in the beginning of the show, $86,000 was our first year. The next year, we went to a little over a million, and then we went to three million. So we, we had steps really, really quick. Yeah. And so we were talking about people. And so we were calculating how much this is a really 
revenue to a person. We're trying to figure it out. And then you come in and you're like, well, do you really know how much every person's worth in your company? I'm like, well, we're paying them what they're worth. No, no, no. It's like, you're, you're starting to say numbers and Doug, Gil and myself are looking at each other and like, yeah, we need to call a timeout. So not only do we say maybe no more people, we need to personally step back from our business and say, what kind of business do we want to build? Nice. You know, do we want to build the, the quick cash grab? Well, no, we're in year 16. We're, we're pretty content with building a legacy business. But where do we want to go with this legacy business? So we were talking, do we want to get to 25 million this year? Is that a goal that we're aiming for? You know, 20 million. I'm like, no, I'm probably comfortable between 15 and 20 million, but we're a widget based business. You know, yeah, I sell supplements and yeah, we provide fulfillment services, but at the end of the day, I have to do a lot of work to make a quarter of 50 cents or a dollar per customer because there's a lot of things that have to happen. So I've got just under 30 people making all of these transactional items go out the door and it's a lot of steps. So we, I've had nothing but people meetings, scale meetings, system meetings is my scale piece. I need better systems. So fully accountable is a good measurable piece that not only can we use for ship offers, but we're going to start working to leverage with the customers that we're working with because then we can get on the same page. It's systematized and I can say, hey, look, I'm going to help you forecast. I'm going to help you be able to scale. I'm going to be able to help you miss some of the pieces that you're skipping over and I'm going to bring you reporting because I see it for my business. Nice. Hold on a second. I love it. You're going to take I love it. You're going to take our client tool of software for, that's in your guys. You're going to take our projector analyzer and use it in your business. 100%. Great hack. Love it. Right? Why would I, why would, if I'm only using it for me, I'm, I, it's like I'm not, we, we talked hack. about it, reversing the org chart in your organization, right? So we're always at the top looking down on our people. Let's flip the thing around and be on the bottom and, and helping them get that's to the next really level. That's really smart, bro. And so... For all of you that missed, Tony, I love it, dude. Dude, this is exactly why I run around with smart people. Because you're going to take a tool, you're now going to do the projection and analysis for your current clients, and maybe even when you get smarter, go and prospect with it. Dude, that's a million dollar idea. That is a great idea. That is actually a needle mover for ship offers. And so instead of making your head bigger, Let's go back to another question, right? So we talked about the scale. You said people and systems. Got it. Um, but I, I'll tell you, so many people, go ahead. Here's something that I don't know if you would think about. Yeah. I didn't think about this, but I got a dose of it. I just got off the call with a coaching client, my coach, yep. John you can Stevenson. Say Sean. It's okay. We can say the little guy. He's great. We love him. And I said it a genius and I said, the reason you get to the next level isn't because you have gotten to the next level because your, your, your people are better. It's because you are better than you were when you were at a lower level. Meaning, so are you spending time investing in a coach and a mentor? Are you going Love to it. seminars? Are you reading better books? Are you talking in masterminds? Are, have you incubated your friends in a closed group? Are you the smartest guy in the room? That's probably the time for you to exit out of that room and get into the room where you're like, you're sitting on the edge of your seat the whole time instead of sitting back in your seat the whole time. I think so many people this day and age know everything. So they're like, yeah, I got it. You know, I'll, I'll do it later. I want to sit on the edge of the seat, just like you are listening in and actually hearing the opportunities. If you just listen, people will give you the hacks, the tools, the things that you can implement in your business. Now, anything you implement in your business, I say, don't make it like we're doing this, everything's, all bets are off. This is the only thing we're doing. It's a test and you Got have it. to inform your people that it's a test too. Hey guys, we are gonna test something for the next 30 days or the next two weeks or the next week and I want feedback. So I wanna empower you guys to come forward and let me know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. And you know, they're gonna tell you straight up like this is a bad thing and I'm like, so what's wrong with it? And then we can work through it. Because see, with no vision, the team doesn't know where to go. Mm. And even if I have the vision, Doug and Gil have the vision, the managers have the vision, but the people in the warehouse don't, then they're pivoting away from us and where we're going and we have to get them wrangled back in to get back on mission. Um, I heard uh, Alex Chaffin said, you know, if you go into the warehouse and you talk to somebody in your warehouse and you say, hey, um, what's the mission of this company? What's the vision of this company? And they're like, it's this, this, and this. 
Uh, and then Alex is like, I'd buy that business because the people in the warehouse know where you're going. And if you don't, then just get everybody on the same page. And I think that's a lot of the disconnect that bus businesses face is that the upper management knows, but the people at the bottom who open the door and welcome and greet people don't right, have the so same you have a Let's go over there. You have a good size organization, a whole bunch of people running around there. And you're not a wallflower. Just in case anyone on this call was confused on the show, you're not. You're, you're going to have an opinion just about everything, including a bowel movement. So how do you get the newest person in the warehouse or your marketing team, how do you empower them to have an opinion when they know something, but they're afraid to share it with you. That's great. I mean, so we have two weekly huddles that first give them structure of how we do things. So um, Mondays and Fridays, we have like about a 10 minute team huddle that everybody in the company comes and huddles up. We talk about what's going on, what's good, what's bad. And we let everybody start to hear that we clear the air. We just talk about open stuff. And then we say, if there's anybody who needs any help with anything in any department, come see a manager, managers stick around. So people will trail off, managers will stay and people will walk up. The first part is just creating the communication channel. The second part is seeing and addressing people who are not addressing the opportunity. A lot of people, you know, you tell them to raise their hand, they're, they're never gonna raise the hand. So I will take a walk, a manager will take a walk and we'll walk up to somebody and like, hey, so how's it going? It's all right. I mean, I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, well, you know, my mom died last night. Oof. I'm like, oh, wow. All right. It's bigger than me now. This this mission and what I'm doing is bigger than me. Can I just give you a hug? Can I just give you a hug for a moment? And they're like, OK, thanks. And, you know, give me a hug. And I'm like, well, now I have to go back to my team. This has happened. I had somebody who had some loss, pretty major loss in our company. And we were sitting around and she just started crying. And I just like I felt really bad. And I said, Hey, here's five people from your team. I want to be able to help you. I do have a meeting that I need to get to. But hey, guys, would you stop watching TV for a moment and just be Gloria? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, all right. She needs some love. She needs mm. some attention. She needs. And so I see a lot more. We have the opportunity. See, if we put everybody above us, I have the opportunity to see better. If everybody's below me, I'm going to get confused at where everybody's at. But if I put everybody in front of me and I truly say, I need to put the best part of my company's needs first, I need to help them get coaching, mentoring. I need to get them help, tools. Just, just as much as I'm investing in myself, I need to help them invest in themselves. And I've even said this before. I hope I give you the, the, the piece of material that gets you to leave my company someday. I hope that I train you up so good that you want to go do something for yourself instead of working for my dreams. I want you to start working and living for your dreams. Love and it. I tell people that all the time. My job is just to be a stepping stone for where you want to go in life. So, you know, one of the journeys that I've noticed businesses, including my own here at Fully Accountable and, and the businesses we've run is – this struggle to deal with hard issues. Who is the officer of hard issues at your company? I definitely would put Gil as more or less the person who's going to handle the majority of obstacles that are, are being faced in this organization that we were, we're facing. However, I, like you said, I have a bowel movement opinion. I have an opinion on everything, right? So I'm literally all eyes, all ears, as a salesman should, always looking around and seeing what that opportunity may be. And I made, I had one this morning and I got to go clean up my mess. I didn't handle it right. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just need to handle it differently. He's a really cool guy. And I just, I got, I let the better part of me and my sleep patterns and everything else throw me. And so this morning then I operated from that standpoint, I have to do some stuff myself. And I, and I think as organizers of a team and a company that has 16 years of history and some employees that have been with us 15. It also speaks volume for that we've done our best, but we've done a lot of tests. And so Gil may be the person to go do the test for 30 days and get feedback on right. like this did or didn't work. And, but I also think it's the empowerment of empowering people to help you in your company. Love it. And I, and I think, uh, the only piece that I can really add is I'm doing myself a disservice if I'm not saying I don't, if when I say I know everything, I, I call audibles all the time. I'm like, I don't know. I need to call a friend. Like I called you today in a meeting and I'm like, Hey dude, I just want to clear the air really quick. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's wrong. Don't do that. And I'm like, click. I'm like, see, he told me we're not doing it. 
and that's it. In two seconds, it's over. Most people are afraid to ask for help. Yeah, right. You're right, man. Help, All right, help, so help. Let me switch now to another subject. So you have three partners in the business. I have not seen a situation where, you know, the most famous triumvirate in the history uh, was probably Mark Antony, Cleopatra, you know, and Caesar, right? They all came together, the battle of the bands, and it all fell apart, right? How does the triumvirate work? How do you get one leader anointed? Talk to me about that daily struggle of three partners. Just a lot of struggle, um, and I wouldn't change it. Uh, as much as I, at times, I, I don't like it, um, I have to realize that I cause a lot of the, the grief and the problems in our company because I am such an opinionated person and I like I have to be involved in everything. <laughs> so Doug is in charge of finances. Six weeks ago to maybe three months ago, I said I will never give another price as long as I live in this company. I don't want to be in charge of how much something costs for how we sell in this company. So I literally just said, hey, I'm pushing it to Doug. The, so the sales team all has the real numbers. And if you have a question on that, go see Doug. And you, if you can get Doug to move the needle and it sounds like a good deal, it's a win-win for everybody, then he'll give you the yes or no. So one, I had to know what Doug's really good at. Doug is the financial guy. We don't owe money to any company in 16 years. We've been able to do all this own nice. on our own cash. So I look to Doug to keep doing that. Uh, number two, Gil's in charge of the org chart, the operations of the day-to-day people coming and going, meeting, doing key KPI reviews, getting a lot of the team together. I'm the rah-rah cheerleader, that's my role. I'm the creator of opportunities. That's where I know I fit best into the organization. I'm the extractor of data when I go to events. I'm always bringing back leads. All right, so let me ask you a question part. though. Are you also the leader of the business? No, I think if you asked Doug, he would be the CEO I'd probably be the vice president and Gil could be the COO, right? If you ask me, or, I'm or the Gil's CEO. Or like Gil's like the hippie with the flowers, getting everyone to get along, <laughs> right? Whatever. I'm like the CEO today. Tomorrow, Gil could be the CEO. We're all 33% owners. So right. but, a title, what we did a long time ago, yep. there is, I don't care what your title is. I care what you do. Okay. <laughs> but at it. the end of the day, you made a quote, right? And it's right up here on my wall. And it was said by our great pal, Solomon, where there is no leadership, the people shall perish. Right. So I, so Gil is the, because I travel so much, yep. we, we've given structure to Gil to lead gotcha. the people, to be the leader of the people. Now, when I'm in, when I'm around, Gil goes to the side and allows me to lead those Monday oh. and Friday meetings, right? But are so people Gil's confused the, who they go to? No, because no, they know for a fact that when I'm around, Gil and I are kind of leading the people together. Gotcha. Like we just, we're on the same page in the vision. But if you're and off clarity. being salesman, they know they can go to him and not wait for you. Yeah. yeah. So it's written into our org chart. It actually shows the three leaders at the top. And then if you have a question in your department, who you go to, who you go to all the way to the top. And then knowing that everybody has specific duties and cool. we have a three, a three prong uh, approach. You know, we all three agree. We do it. We two, two do and one doesn't, we don't. And it's been that way for 16 years. We've had two fights in 16 years and I'm responsible for both of them. Um, <laughs> well, let's not talk about personal train wreck stuff, you know? So, Hey, the loyalty of partners is important, right? Oh, so I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't. I mean, uh, some of you know, my backstory, you know, in 2008, I was, at the end of the end and I was attempting to take my life and, you know, got caught up in drugs and alcohol and a whole bunch of, you know, other issues. And they constantly came in and tried to have these talks with me like, Tony, you know, you could do better. You could do better. Like, I really need you. You're a leader. We need you. I could do better. And um, they never threw me to the curb. So I have a lot of loyalty towards them. That's awesome. And and then we've all gone through our patterns here. We've all gone through difficult struggles and journeys uh, here. And so I'm always reminded, um, to be the change and know that, you know, I'm, I, I gotta be, I gotta be helpful. I gotta remind myself that I went through my season. My partners are going to go through their seasons and we're going to do this together. And All this right. Is so let me ask you a tough question. And maybe it's not the question of the way your partnership looks like, but you know, it's not marriage, right? You didn't make a covenant before the Lord and stay through it all. Right. But it, it is a strong commitment. What about for the people out there who are in a partnership that lacks character and integrity and is not 
uh, equally uh, mm. trying to. What do you do in a situation like that? Like you, you at times, you guys blinked a little, but you never, you never made any decisions. So what, what, what about the people out there who are struggling, really dealing with that issue? Well, I brought this back and I'm about to implement this with my partners. I'm going to test it first and see, see how it goes. So we were just together in Dallas um, at Funnel Hacking and my old pastor joined us for a little bit dinner. And he said to me, he goes, Tony, I just paid $5,000 to go to a, like a marriage retreat and a counselor gave me all of this wisdom. And at the very end, he said one thing to me that was worth all of the $5,000. And I said, all right, what is it? And he goes, well, before I tell you, I'm like typical <laughs> sales guy, right? I'm all drawn in. I'm like getting my checkbook out. Can I just pay for the $5,000 piece of advice now? He says, real talk. Mm. You need to have boundaries so you can have real talk. You are in a business organization going to use other people to vet your information. You're going to be like, so what do you think about this? I'm really having a problem with, uh, you know, Doug and Gil. And so I'm talking to people on the side instead of talking to them about my yeah. problems. So you're saying real talk and you got to bring that to your marriage too. You got to have a safe place that, you know, you can roll up the sleeves, you can get a little bloody, but it's real talk for like that 10, 15 minutes, once a week. If you're feeling it, you need to say it. And so, and so that assumes, I, I bet in his advice is put off to the side any worries or fears of breakup or this yeah. is real talk in a safe place, right? Yeah. Don't you, don't do you have marriage? In your marriage, is divorce on the table? Listen, just so you know, my marriage is perfect. So let's not talk about my marriage. <laughs> no, no, I'm not using yours as the I'm example. Kidding. Listen, but I'm saying you're it right, because Tony, I, we've made a commitment in the 20 some odd years that we've been married. That's really hilarious. I just said it that way. But in the 21 plus years we've been married, we made a commitment beforehand. We would never use the word divorce and we've never even used the word breakup. We've honored. So that. then take the word off the table when you're talking and your fears about partnerships. Right. I think so. Like I, I a couple weeks back, I just said, screw it, man. I said, do you guys want to write me a check for blank? I'll take one single check for blank. I'm out. They looked at me like, what? I said, we now need to work just so we're clear. I'm not leaving. We need to work on just in case somebody does one day. Mm, we have it. to also have that yeah, real talk. I love it. Yep. And, it and I said, so, so many people don't think that day will come. I know I don't get married to get a divorce. But what happens one day when that topic of conversation comes up, like I'm bored and I'm not happy like I used to be. Do you have, do you have counseling in play? Mm. Partnerships need counseling. That's why strategic coaches, people who can help me so I can work through my issues so I can get stronger. But I also have to have real talk. I have to have that safe space to come in and really share what's going on in my heart. Um, especially I, I would say my partners know me. Well, not in an intimate sense, but they know me as probably well as anybody else on planet Earth. I've been with them for 16 years. I've had something around. Well, maybe not uh, as good as Amber, but close. No, they, I mean, that's what's crazy is that I've known my two business partners, not everybody knows theirs as well. I've known them since I was two and three. I've known them for 38 years, 39 years. That's yeah, a but they don't time. know about your third nipple and all that stuff. Amber's got the privilege of that. But <laughs> other than that, they know you pretty well, right? They do. And, and what we talk about all the time is how can we help each other to get better? Love it. So take yourself out of the equation, build your people up. Help them get to the next level. Help yourself learn, uh, get to events, seminars, workshops, get yourself leveled up. And then systems and people will help you to scale. But you have to have clear vision on where you're headed. And everybody on your team has to know the vision and be able to cite, recite that vision to you. So how so that, regularly do you communicate that vision downward, downstream? Well, we just got out of a meeting you know, five minutes before this call about vision and, and really looking at, um, Jim Collins, uh, a book was recommended chapter two, and I'm going to throw it out and I would get it wrong. Good to great. It's about, huh? Good to great. Great. No, no. Before that, before that entrepreneur, it's one of his, it's his first book that he ever wrote. Oh, what's it called? I, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I wish I had my notepad in front of me. So just say Jim Collins is the first book. First book, Jim Collins, chapter two. It's all about vision. Uh -huh. It's all about, uh, getting people on, on the same page and really being able to get that vision implemented into your company. So one of the things is I've heard, and I actually might have been from some of his stuff, that you need to get that vision out almost every 21 days. Like you gotta yep. regularly get it out there. So oh, yeah. 
So in addition to that, one of the fun things you can do since you're in iteration and test mode is kind of follow, I think it was probably, you were talking about earlier about Brad Martineau or somebody, right? Is like go around and be the Alex Sharfin in your own business and ask people, what's our vision? Like spot test, right? No, I, it, it's genius, right? And why does it take me going to Genius Networks to actually get genius insight? Well, it's because I got to remind myself who am I surrounding myself with? Love if that. I've never done it before and the people I'm hanging around with haven't, okay, so they got me to, you know, 14 million. Are they going to help me get to 15 or 16 or 20? I'm probably going to need, I, I hate to say this, I'm probably going to need some new friends. Not like money's everything, but I'm going to need some new people to network with and get around who say, hey, Tony, you need to meet Bob. Bob's going to introduce you to Stu and Stu's going to help you get to 20. He's a great guy. He's done Love it for it. 20 companies. And that's his sweet spot, you know, 15 to 20. That's all he concentrates on is helping businesses get to the next leg in the eight figure game. Dude, I love it. All right, we're winding down. You are Ladies and gentlemen, today on the Fully Accountable Show with Vinny Fisher comes the last three questions. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask really one. Like, All right. And maybe two, but definitely for sure one. Um, you know, everyone talks about balance. And I look at life a little bit from a priority and perspective standpoint. You've got one about to leave for college. One, you're chancing life every day, teaching them how to drive. You got a business that's scaling and a wife who's just super awesome. Talk to us about how you deal with the perspective of putting things into priority. Because this is a big issue as an entrepreneur when we out there and not punching someone else's clock, but punching our own. So I, I'm working on something that I'm going to release really, really quick, but I'm going to share it today if I can with you. So I think if someone would grab a piece of paper and draw three buckets, and those three buckets look like your personal bucket, your business bucket, and your dream bucket. And, and literally go to your personal bucket and start writing all the stuff that you need to do in your day for your personal bucket. So you can start to like level up and start seeing all the things that you do. You know, I take my kids to school, I'm picking them up, I'm attending sporting events, I'm going to the gym for myself, I'm meditating, blah, 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 blah. And you just realize that your personal bucket looks kind of more like your business bucket. Wow. You're just a doer of things all day for other people. And then you get to your business bucket and you're overwhelmed and you're kind of feeling mm. like daddy daycare and you're running people, you need to do this, this and this. So two things suffer. Your dream bucket has no opportunity for you to spend any time in it. And if you really look at it, you don't have any time for you. Mm. So what you really need to do is add a fourth bucket <laughs> and you need to add the you bucket. Mm. Like you need to add you time, right? So it's you personal because personal is really my family, everything else that I need to do to help everybody else in my life. Yep. Then I need to take my business and move it to the end and slide dream in between that. So it goes you personal dream business. And you need to wake up in the morning 15, 30 minutes earlier, schedule out your day. I have a, a Z3 worksheet that I'd be happy to give to anybody who backwards. It's from the time you put your head on the pillow to the time you woke up earlier in the morning. Literally start to get time back in your life by doing this exercise and look at where all your wasted time is going. Then get into gratitude. Balance is key. So is gratitude. Then talk about the three things that you need to work on, the non-negotiables in your day. Then look at identifying one habit in your life today that you became aware of. You know what? I, I hit the snooze three times today. That's a really bad habit I need to work on because you can flip it around to I got up 15 minutes before my alarm was off going. And so that's actually a good habit because that's helping you to get productive. And then a person on the list of somebody who's had a profound impact on your life, an old teacher, a neighbor, Vinny, who, who constantly speaks truth into my life is really good. When I have marital issues, I go to Vinny. Actually, I bypass Vinny and go to Deb. It's and Deb's good really move. good at giving <laughs> solid advice. If you want good and advice, go to her. It's about getting into a routine. So yeah. number one, I have a routine. Number two, I have a whole bunch of people that are my Plinko accountability partners, people who I toss ideas by that I know are going to give me honest truth. Not what I want to hear, but the truth. Love it. So I got people in my life that are truly accountable. And then I, I get to work. And by the time I'm, I get to work, now I have people who need me to lead. Mm. They're expecting me to lead. That's that's the role of a leader and an owner in a company. So I need to make sure that I, I 
I go up with the good stuff and I go down to my partners with the stuff that I'm dealing with, the bad stuff, if I got an issue, I'm bringing that to them because the people don't need to see the leader break down. They, see, they need to see the leader thrive, but they also need a little bit of the leader is a real human being. He has ups and downs and days. And so we talk about that. And then the last piece is, is the dream bucket for me is super big. I had to put the dream before my business. I've noticed that is a big difference for you. Like you, when you started leading more with like this 74 week vacation, I'm teasing, like when you put Italy up and you did this and you, when you started putting those big items first, I noticed small kind of victories a, a lead to big of- opportunities, small victories lead to big wins. And so, yeah, I'm going to go to Italy in a couple weeks, right? I'm going to go to Italy. I'm going to come home 40 days later. I'm going to be in Barcelona. I'm now working on the one for August. People say, well, you're just wasting your money. I said, no, I'm enjoying the experiences right now. Dude, love because it. if you work so hard and you get to the end of life and you're like, look back on all these regrets, like I wish I should have could have done this. Well, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm saying today is the day to live the one day that you've never lived before to the fullest. It's it, right? So the last piece I'll give you. I wake up in the morning with intention and contribution on my mind. I go about my day with contribution is like the sole reason why I'm living my day. I want to contribute to my kids, my wife, my business, my personal relationships, to my sobriety. I want to I want to show up big. And then when I do my spot check inventory at night before I go to bed, I want to look back and say, was I authentic today in my words and how I showed up and where I need to clean up my mess? Let me clean up my mess. If it's a text, if it's getting a journal and just quickly writing some notes down, like I need to work on this. I need to take care of this. Say my prayers, go to bed. I sleep so much better. I wake up with so much more intention because my mind is not on what I didn't do. It's on what I need to do today to get me to where I want to go in life. That's it. Dude, love it. All right. Before, I want to recap two things, and then we're, we're, we're done. And then I get to let you go hang out with your team and say all these awesome things about our great show. So quite, thing one is, if I wanted to get Katie a hold of you. Fisher, now in depth. If I wanted to get a hold of you at Ship Offers, I could just go to ShipOffers.com? You could go to ShipOffers.com. And if you were interested in learning more about what Ship Offers did and you wanted to get a consultation, there's actually a way to get a free consultation and, uh, and one that's of all our, accessible right off the site? Yeah, right off the bat. Great. The next thing, you said it, I just it seemed like I might have just skirted us a little bit there. You have some resources in, it looked like, in how to maximize some of your abilities to perform. And you kept throwing away our destroy excuses and all that stuff. Can you just tell me two seconds, a little commercial about that? Destroying excuses is what I need the most in my life. I'm constantly faced with obstacles and usually I get in the way and they're my excuses. So out of need for helping myself to stay accountable in the world, I wanted to buy fully accountable from Vinny, but he wouldn't sell it. Um, Cause I truly believe that's oh, what I'm doing. Oh, you can buy it. You just didn't want to write the check that it was necessary to buy it. Let's be you clear. You can change the name. <laughs> um, so Destroying Excuses is a six week program that I've incubated with small group coaches to help you maximize your potential and to literally live a fulfilled life. Oh, I love and it. so many of us um, are stuck And we make excuses of why we can't have what others do. And I'm not saying compare yourself to others, but if you wanted to ever get to the eight figure mark, you're not going to do it by talking to five figure mindset people. You got to get your business and your mindset to the next level. So destroying excuses incubates entrepreneurs and business owners in a way where we're bouncing ideas off, but we're doing literally habit breaking exercises every single day to get you into the wins. Right, so since celebrate. we're in a Facebook Live environment, we'll just drop those into the comments. That'd be awesome. Great. Love yep. it. All right. Any um, last the, the parting The most important words? thing, Vinny, I would tell you is I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. You always challenge me to think differently than most coaches and mentors. Most people just tell me what I want to hear. You're always challenging me to rethink my thoughts so that I get to maybe the same Same point, but I think about how I got there a little differently. Did I do it by myself? No, I did it with a team. Always emphasis on team. So you you you've showed me what a great team looks like. That's why we're we're doubling down our efforts not only with you personally, but also with your business because you're just showing leaders today, CEOs, small business owners, that to get to the next level, you need to surround yourself with good people and teams. So thank you for that. Thanks, bud. I really appreciate that. I crew. 
Tony, I'd like to think on behalf of everyone here today, you gave a ton of value. Way to try to drink an empty bottle. We really do appreciate that. Well, I just that. put two caps on it. Man, I got to go. <laughs> hey, listen, day. Tony, thanks for spending your time with us today. And hey, everyone out there on the Vinny Fisher Show, um, drop a comment if you like this. Drop a note to Tony over there at Chip Offers. And his resources will be here in the comment section. Tony, have a great day. Thank you, brother.